We march into Wessex to the aid of Wessex, but be in no doubt, what we fight for is the freedom and the glory of Mercia. And once again, we will show the King Alfred how a warrior should be. We will show the bastard heathens how a warrior should fight. These were the words of Lady Ethelflaed, rallying the Mercian guard before the Battle of Furnum against the Vikings, a battle that would ultimately lead to the Vikings losing their land and foothold in England. There are only a handful of warrior women from history who have captured imaginations for centuries. The most famous are, of course, Bodica, Freitas, Eric's daughter, Catherine Sforza, and the teenager Joan of Arc. However, women in a man's world who men followed into battle were the exceptions in history. But there is one warrior woman who very few have heard about. Eleven centuries ago, Ithel Flaed, an exceptional woman, warrior and ruler, wielded her sword in great battles. She is one of the few known women who not only held a role within the household as mother and lady, and within the court as daughter and wife to kings, but also wielded power on the battlefield. What's more, she is the only queen in English history to have passed her reign directly to her daughter. She is a medieval wonder, but she has been overshadowed by the men who surrounded her in life, like her father, Alfred the Great, her husband, Athelred of Mercia, and her ultimate successor, her nephew, Athelistan, the king of the whole of Britain. In the 12th century, the historian Henry of Huntingdon declared Ethelflaed to be so powerful that in praise and exaltation of her wonderful gifts, some call her not only lady, but even king. He praised her as worthy of a man's name and more illustrious than Caesar. Let's take a closer look at Lady Ethelflaed, the warrior queen who crushed the Vikings. This is Women in History with Magnus... We do not know when Athelflaed was born, but her parents were married in 868 AD, and it's thought that she was their firstborn child. When she was born, East Anglia had been attacked by the marauding Vikings, just three years earlier, in what has been dubbed the Great Heathen Army. They managed to conquer all of modern England, except for Wessex, and it was into this violent world that Athelflaed was born into. There is little information about her childhood, and she first appears in the historical record when she was a fully grown adult. By this time, she was married to Ethelred of Mercia. She is mentioned in Alfred the Great's will, where he leaves her a property plus 100 pounds, while her husband was willed a precious sword. As a wife, Aethelflaed was a precious commodity, and married the much older Ethelred, who had served Alfred the Great as a loyal lieutenant. This marriage brought together the English-speaking kingdoms of Wessex and the newly reclaimed Mercia and strengthened the two kingdoms against the Vikings in the north. However, Ethelflaed, unlike most other women at the time, wasn't about to be overshadowed by her husband. Instead, records report that she was signing diplomatic documents and presiding over provincial courts in place of the elderly Ethelred. As he became increasingly ill, she assumed more of his responsibilities, including arranging diplomatic agreements and refurbishing many of the towns. When the Vikings in Ireland started to settle to the northwest, Ethelflaed made two plans. She offered land for the Vikings to settle in the Wirral, and on the other instructed that the ancient Roman city of Chester be refortified in case the Vikings decided to press southwards into Mercia. When Vikings attacked Chester in 907, they failed to breach its walls, and her foresight and caution had paid off. Athelflaed's reputation as a canny ruler extended, not only through the English-speaking world, but over the sea, even reaching her Viking foes in Scandinavia. She gained a reputation as a keen diplomat, an engaged ruler, but also as a military strategist. She understood the importance of aligning herself with other powerful rulers and supported her brother, Edward the Elder, in his reconquest of Mercian territories in the Danilo. When her husband Ethelred died in 911, she was declared Lady of the Mercians and took over control of the kingdom, the first woman in history to do so. In Wessex, the role of royal women was one of obedience. Ethelflaed's mother had only ever held the title of wife of the king and signed no charters with her husband, Ethelflaed took advantage of a tradition that granted women in Mercia greater rights. Nevertheless, 
She needed the support of the earls and the high-ranking royal officials. It is very much telling that, rather than hand the kingdom to a male heir or succumb to Wessex, the earldormen of Mercia chose Ethel Flaid as their leader, something that was quite astonishing for the time. In 917, her troops reconquered the Viking city of Derby, a critical victory as this had been one of the five boroughs of the Danielaw. The next year she secured Leicester, and from there made her way towards the prestigious Viking stronghold of York. As the Danes were ready to offer her their submission, she died, possibly of dysentery, in June 918. After her and Edward's successful campaigns against the Vikings, the Danes laid waste to large parts of Mercia in retaliation, and carrying off plunder and destroyed the land. A joint Anglo-Saxon army headed them off at Tettenhall and massacred them there. Three Viking kings were reported to have been killed, and as a result... The image of the warrior queen bearing three royal swords was born. As well as being a formidable warrior, Ithelflaed was also a shrewd ruler who set about extending the work of her father, Alfred, by strengthening his fortifications at Tamworth, Stafford, and Warwick. Like her father, she believed that the recently rejuvenated Anglo-Saxon kingdoms depended on the church and its divine favor to secure their reputation as worthy opponents to the Danish pagans. Her prestige rose even more when she secured a most precious relic, the body of the kingly St. Oswald. The arrival of this relic was accompanied by lavish ceremonies, and the Mercian credits their female ruler with returning this holy royal saint to English-held land. Was Ethel Flaid a good ruler? While other kingdoms were ravaged by Viking incursions in the ninth century, parts of Mercia, like Worcester, remained strong. Ethelflaed, like her father, sought to strengthen the prestige of her kingdom by investing extensively in urban renewal, education, through the monasteries, and in the arts. She ensured that her daughter, Eilf Wynne, would succeed her, this also a first in English history, but also fostered her brother's son, who later would become the great unifier of England, King Ethelstan. Ethelflaed was not content to be simply a bearer of heirs. She gave her husband one daughter, but William of Malmesbury suggests she shied away from marital obligations because of the risks she knew it posed her life. He records that she declined to have sex after bearing a daughter because it was unbecoming of the daughter of a king to give way to a delight which, after a time, produced such painful consequences. She invested in church buildings throughout Mercia, particularly in Gloucester, which she transformed from a derelict backwater to a vibrant town. Many of these cities owe their existence to her efforts. They would have been destroyed by the Vikings if they had broken through the walls. Ethelflaed died at Tamworth on June 12, 918, and her body was carried 121 kilometers to Gloucester, where she was buried with her husband in their foundation at St. Oswald's Minster. So why do we not know more about Ethelflaed? For a start, it could be that her own brother had her largely written out of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, so as not to promote separatism between Wessex and Mercia. However, she maintained a celebrated reputation, particularly and surprisingly under the Normans, with chroniclers going out of their way to praise her military achievements. Yet in the end, it was Boudicca who would come to captivate as warrior woman under Elizabeth I, with some historians thinking this was possibly because of their legendary shared red hair. Ethel Flade's name disappeared over the following centuries, but was revived in 1913 with a statue in Tamworth erected to commemorate her achievements. Even so, in history books, she would be outdone by her father, Alfred the Great, who English historians continued to celebrate as scourge of the Danes and savior of England. She was a product of her age, constrained by her time, yet she achieved so much. She was a woman that wrote her name into history. I hope you found this presentation interesting, and if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel, and please check out my other videos on this channel to see if there are others you find interesting. And I hope to see you in the next one.